Now let's move on to the next evidences of evolution that is the vestigial organs. Before giving examples, let us see what does it convey, what are vestigial organs, how will it define vestigial organs. Okay, the organs which occur in reduced form, so they occur in which form, reduced form and are useless to the possessor but are homologous to the fully developed functional organs of related animals. So you can make out when you talk about vestigial organs, these are those organs which occur in reduced form and they are useless now but they were useful in our ancestors and they are homologous to the fully developed functional organs of related animals. Means if you talk about some related species, related organisms, they show some homologous homologous behavior. What sort of homologous behavior we will we'll discuss. But remember the vestigial organs are the organs which occur in reduced form and are useless to the possessor but are homologous to the fully developed functional organs of related animals. So let us talk about ourselves first. Let us talk about human body. You know why we are going to study these vestigial organs in human body because when we talk about the theories of evolution, we talk about the concept of evolution and we talk about these vestigial organs, they hold to a point, a very important point and we are going to discuss that. So please understand this very, very, very carefully. When we talk about vestigial organs in human body, Initially, scientists reported that there were around 90 vestigial organs in human body. But now this number is reduced. Why? Because at that time, vestigial organs were not properly studied. Now this number has reduced. We have some vestigial organs in the human body. We will discuss a few of them. Here, what you are seeing? You are seeing an organ that is appendix. Appendix is a tubular organ, a tube shaped organ which is present here at the end of the large intestine which is going to connect the small intestine. So this is a tubular organ which has uh, no function in human body now and they, it is supposed that we have this appendix because we had an ancestor who was plant eating because this organ appendix helped in the digestion of cellulose. When we are going to eat raw plants, when we are going to eat raw food, what is the main uh, component in raw plants that is the cellulose and the function of appendix is considered that it helped in the digestion of cellulose. So our ancestor means your and my ancestor would have been a plant eating ancestor. But now since we eat properly cooked food, soft food, we do not need this organ for digestion, right. So appendix which causes a disease appendicitis when it needs to be surgically removed because it causes a lot of pain and most of you, you have heard that uh, somebody has a lot of pain and his appendix needs to be removed. So this organ appendix is of no use now because it has become what? It has become useless, functionless. And this is an example of vestigial organ in human body. Earlier it was thought that it was having a function that is digestion of cellulose when our ancestors had uh, food which was raw. But now since we are not eat, eating raw food, we are eating properly cooked and soft food, we do not need this organ that is appendix and since it is useless, so it needs to be removed because it can sometimes cause trouble, it can cause disease name, named as appendicitis. So this organ appendix is a vestigial organ in case of human beings. Next example of vestigial organ is, can you imagine your wisdom tooth? Most of you when you are studying this must not have heard about what is wisdom tooth because in 35% of individuals this wisdom tooth is not there. It never comes. But in many individuals at the later on stage, the last tooth that comes is the wisdom tooth. So this wisdom tooth is also known as the last molar. Right? Why it is the last molar? Because it comes out very later stage in, uh, our, in our jaw and this is the last molar. So this wisdom tooth is not there in 35% of the individuals already. Why? Because this wisdom tooth had some function in the past but now it is what? It is useless. So that is why 35% of the individuals have no wisdom tooth. So this wisdom tooth is an example of what? It is an example of a vestigial organ. 
नेक्स्ट इन केस ऑफ ह्यूमन बॉडी वी हैव सर्टेन ऑरिकुलर मसल्स दीज ऑरिकुलर मसल्स आर प्रेजेंट इन से डॉग्स कैट्स वॉट इज द फंक्शन ऑफ ऑरिकुलर मसल्स इज वेन दे हेयर सम साउंड दीज ऑरिकल ऑरिकुलर मसल्स हेल्प द Uh, animals to respond to it you know the air the the ear the pinna of the ear this is the pinna of the ear it got uh, already adjusted in the direction from where the sound is coming so you can make out this auricular muscles are helping the animals to locate from where that sound is coming but in human beings this auricular muscles are what they are reduced means now they have become what they have become useless so the auricular muscles in the ear of the ear are example of vestigial organ and next we have discussed the vermiform appendix we call appendix as vermiform appendix see this is a tube like structure it is connecting this uh, from the large intestine and the small intestine and since it helps in digestion of cellulose we don't eat cellulose nowadays we don't eat raw food so this is again useless and this needs to be removed it is an example of what it is example of vestigial organ next we move on to you see some human beings have lot of hairs on their body so this lot of hair on the body on face and other parts of the body are also considered vestigial and when you talk about the tail it is known as coccyx this tail is also considered as vestigial how is this tail formed at the end of our vertebral column we have certain segments these segments are joined to form a tail i'm just giving you a rough description of what it is these segments are at the end of the vertebral column these segments are joined to form a tail bone which is also known as coccyx coccyx right so this coccyx is a vestigial organ in human beings because it has no use but we can uh, specify that our ancestors had those tail bones and it must be function it must be having some function at that time but nowadays this tail tail bone is what it is useless so we don't have this tail bone but still a few babies are born that have this tail bone or coccyx and then we have some human beings which have extra ck on their on their body and this is why these are also considered to be vestigial so remember what what uh, what we have discussed so far the first is the appendix second is the wisdom tooth then we have auricular muscles which are now useless functionless they are in reduced form and then we have talked about hairs on the body tail bone and cecum on the body so remember that all these organs are what these are vestigial organs why because they are current reduced form and they are useless and what are they conveying that our ancestors would have had that and in their time they were having some function but now they are functionless so that is why these all are examples of what these are examples of vestigial organs